Uh, hey, I'm uh, Toby Wenman, and um, I'm a design engineer here at Codasip, and um, I want to uh, talk about some of the um, RISC-V vector load and store instructions today. The, uh, the load and store instructions are, they're important in every architecture, but especially for vector and wider machines, because it's, it's brilliant if you've got these, if you've got really wide um, execution units that can process lots and lots of data, but if they don't have any data to process, then there's not much use having them. And so being able to efficiently move data into and out of memory is, is very, very important. Um, and that's made even more important by the memory-to-memory uh, -memory nature of RISC-V vector because of the um, agnostic vector length. There are a few different types of load and store instruction that are described in the, uh, in the ISA manual for the vector extension. And um, these, these can be broken into um, a couple, three, three main types essentially, which are, they're called... unit stride, strided, and indexed. And each of these have um, kind of different access patterns for the data. And so if we just look at the unit stride case first, this essentially takes um, contiguous chunks of memory and will load load them into your vector register file. So um, the, the spec, uh, the vector extension adds 32 architectural registers. So there's um, V0 through to V31. And each of those registers are one vector length wide, which is um, a configuration you can choose. So this this can be anything from 128 up to ridiculously wide. So if we look at the unit stride case for the load and stores, they are, um, this is essentially when you have one contiguous block of memory that you'd like to copy into or, or write out of your vector registers. So if you have, um, if you have a big, big chunk of memory, a unit stride will at some, some base address, it will, it will start copying a chunk, a chunk of memory into your vector registers. These chunks are typically accessed in um, chunks that are as wide as your vector registers. So these can be controlled by LMOL the same way as any other instruction can be uh, modified. So this, this, could, this could be two vector register lengths or, th or four or, or eight or, or one, of course. Um, and within each of these chunks can, actually, can be um, many elements as well. So depending on your element width, you could have two 64-bit or 432 or any, any mixture of the, the two. Um, and so, yeah, each, each of these chunks just get kind of copied into or, into or out of one of these one of these vector registers. Um, and, and, that, and that's this really simple case. So you can use that for um, if you're operating over a large um, kind of contiguous block of memory. So, so something really simple like a mem copy. So if you wanted to vectorize mem copy where you could just copy, copy data in and then write it out somewhere else, you'd use these instructions. The, the strided case is, is similar but, but has, um, has one extra feature. And the difference is, is that the accesses aren't based on your vector register width, they're based on elements. So you still have a base address just like unit stride. However, you, each of these instructions also takes a, um, an additional input um, called the stride. And essentially, each the the kind of the base address of each element is separated by one one of these strides. And so, what this allows you to do is it allows you to pick up individual elements from 
from, from memory as long as they're spaced kind of uh, contiguously. So a, a really good example of something like that would be if you had a, um, a C style struct that had kind of um, that had kind of many elements in it. Um, so if you had so I don't know some like an integer and then a, and then a float and then another integer, and you just wanted to pick out the floats, you could set the stride to reach into the struct and just grab the elements you want. Because if this is the integer you don't want in here and this is the integer you don't want in here, you can jump along and just pick what you want. And each of these elements which are loaded get packed into the, the vector register without any gaps. So, so this, so, so these these elements would would all would all would all get kind of concatenated together, um, back to back to back in your vector register. Um, this this stride value is also signed as well, so you can do interesting things such as have a negative stride and essentially reverse the byte order of something, or um, you can even have a stride of zero if you want to say write to a peripheral or something and write the same address multiple times, for example. The indexed case is um, is another generalization on the loads and stores. So instead of um, instead of unit stride where everything's back to back, or instead of strided where there's a fixed distance between each element, indexed instead of taking a stride takes a second vector register that includes an offset for each individual element. And what that allows you to do is you have as before you have a base address. Um, but each element can have its own individual offset. And, this, and these can be in any order and any arbitrary value. So you have an element there, and an element there, an element there. Uh, this allows you to do some quite complex algorithms, all kind of um, directly within memory um, and without having to kind of um, stream or without having to move individual elements to and from the scalar side of the machine to place them in individual places. And typically the performance of indexed is, is uh, worse than the other cases however because you are performing many memory accesses in essentially random locations.